So we can use this action section within our bouncer.ts file within our start directory to actually define our bouncer actions. Actions are how we're going to give or reject authorization for a particular user for a specific task, like creating a post. We'll define our authorization checks within these actions, and then we're going to use these actions to check whether or not a user is actually authorized to perform that particular task. So within our bouncer module is a method called define. So we can do bouncer.define, and this is how we're actually going to define our actions. The first argument here is the action name, so we can do something like create post. The second is an action handler, which we'll provide as a callback function. And the third, if we wish to provide it, are any additional options for this particular definition. We'll get into those here in a little bit. Let's first focus on this callback function. So the callback function itself accepts a couple of arguments. The first is always going to be the user. Now this is going to be of type user. And in some cases, this may also be null. We'll get into that here in a little bit as well. Now the second argument is something that we can provide ourselves at the time that we're calling this particular action. So in this particular case, to create a post, we're not going to need any additional information, but in other cases, this may be something like the post itself. So keep that in mind here going forward. Now inside of this action handler is where we're actually going to perform the check that determines whether or not the user can perform this particular action. So in our case, creating a post. So in our case, we want to limit this particular action to our editors and our admins based off of the user's role. So what we want to do is return and we can do role, import that enum there, editor and role admin. We can check whether or not the current user includes that role. So user dot role. And you know what, whenever I set this project up, I actually forgot to include the role ID on the user model. So we're not going to have that with our IntelliSense and it's not going to populate correctly unless we come in here and we provide that column within our model. So let's do that really quick. So role ID of type number. Okay. So now that we have that, we're good to continue onward. So let's jump back into our bouncer file. Let's do user dot role ID. So all that we're doing here is checking whether or not the user's role ID exists within this array of their roles, editor and admin, which is a value of three and probably four. Yeah, four. So if the user has a role ID of three or four, then we're going to return back a truthy value. Otherwise, it's going to be falsy. So if it's a truthy value that's being returned from this handler here, the user will be authorized to create a post. If it's falsy, the user will be denied the ability to create the post. So that simple line here does it for our create post. Let's add in another definition for viewing a post. So let's do bouncer dot define view post. And for this one, we're going to take the user and we're also going to want a post to be provided into this as well. Now, when we deny an action by returning back a falsy value as we are here, bouncer is going to throw a 403 forbidden exception. That's not going to work for every case. So we can alter that behavior by instead returning back bouncer.deny. So for our view post check, if our post is not published, that's exactly what we want to do. We want to, instead of returning back a 403, return back a 404 because that post does not yet technically exist because it's not published. So if not post dot, and we just have a simple Boolean here checking whether or not something's published. So we can do that dot is published. So if a post is not published, we want to return bouncer.deny saying that this post is not yet published and we can return back a status number of 404 for that error. So now instead of returning back a 403 forbidden, whenever a post is not yet published, we'll return back a 404 with a message, this post is not yet published. And then if this post is published, we'll go ahead and allow the user to view it. Now there's an important thing to note here about these two bouncer actions that we've defined. Both of these require a user to be authenticated within our system. Now that's exactly what we want for our create post. However, for our view post, if the post is published, we want any user to be able to view it. That's not quite fair to restrict it to authenticated users only. So now the default behavior here that bouncer is going to do is before it even calls this callback that we provide to our action, it's going to check whether or not a user is authenticated. If a user is not authenticated, then it's going to immediately deny the action without even running this callback check. In order to allow guests into our bouncer action check, we need to provide that third argument, which is our option set for this particular action, and set the key allow guests equal to true. This will now allow guests into our bouncer action callback meaning that our user can now either be of type user or null. So now given these two bouncer definitions, our create post as it did before is still going to require authentication, 
but our view post is now going to allow guests into the check as well. So this is one way that we can write our actions. In addition to this, we can also chain them directly off of this bouncer right down here. So we can alternatively cut this out of here, take that bouncer call off and chain them down here like so. And we could chain them off of one another as well. So we can cut this one off as well and chain that just below it. So both of those approaches are perfectly valid. Now, whenever it comes to hooks, Bouncer contains two different hooks. It contains a before hook and an after hook. So the before hook is always run regardless if guests are allowed within the actual action and regardless of whether or not a user is actually authenticated. In addition to that, they're also going to run before the action itself as well. So the before hook itself takes a callback and the first argument to this callback is going to be our user. And since the before hook runs regardless of the authentication state, the user can be user or null. The second is going to be the name of the currently run action. And then the last argument is going to be an object containing any additional arguments provided to the check. Now the before hook has a particular way that you need to return data from it. When we return a truthy or falsy value from the before hook, Bouncer is going to skip the action check itself and instead use that truthy or falsy value as the action's final result. However, if we return undefined, Bouncer will continue onward and actually perform the action check and then use that action check's result. So in this particular case, if we want to allow administrators to perform any action within our application, we can do a check here if ID equals role.admin return true. And by returning true here, we're telling Bouncer to skip over the action that is supposed to run and just authorize that user to perform whatever action they're trying to perform. If the user is not an administrator, this Bouncer check will then return back and the default return value in JavaScript is undefined, so we don't need to do anything else beyond this. Now, since our check in our before hook essentially means that administrators aren't even going to run any of our actions, we can simplify our checks by not accounting for admins within them. So instead of doing role editor and role admin check here, we can simply do user.roleID equals role.editor and leave the administrator out of the equation altogether. So that's the before hook. The after hook, on the other hand, is run after the particular action that's to be run has already run. This too is to be provided a callback function. And this callback function, just like the before, accepts the user as the first argument. And this too can be user or null. Since any one given action may allow guests, we can't guarantee that at this point a user would be required. The second is again the action name. The third is the action result. So this is the result of the action that ran. And the fourth, if you need it, is any additional arguments that are provided within the check. Again, just like the before hook, if we return truthy or falsy, the after check will overwrite whatever the action itself returned. So if we return true from the after check, the user will be automatically granted access to perform the action. If we return false, they'll be denied access to perform the action, and that's regardless of what the action itself says. Just like the before hook, if we return back undefined, or in JavaScript's case, return back not at all, Bouncer will use the result that was finalized from the action check itself. So one of the things that the action hook can be useful for is actually logging out the results of our checks themselves. So we can do const user type here to get whether or not the user is an authenticated user or a guest. If we have a user, we'll say user, otherwise we'll say guest. And then we'll check whether or not the user was authorized to perform the action by doing action result dot authorized. And we'll do a simple ternary here. If they were, we'll import the logger and we'll log dot info user type was authorized to, and then we'll put the action name there. If they were not authorized, then we will do logger.info, and I have a typo up there, that should be info. User type was denied to action name for action result dot, and then we can get the error response that was reported from the action. So if you were using the Adonis.js logger to log out whether or not the user was authorized and for what action they were authorized for, or whether they were denied and what action they were denied for, and we'll also log out the response of their denial. So now that we know what our actions look like, let's next learn how we can use them to check whether or not a user is authorized to perform an actual task. So Bouncer actually provides an instance of itself within our HTTP context. So if we jump up to our post controller here and let's scroll down to the create call since that's one of the things that we made an action for so far, and we check what we have on our HTTP context, there should be a new property on here called Bouncer. This Bouncer instance contains a check called authorize. So we can await bouncer dot 
authorize, and then provide it in the name of the action that we want to run. So we can check whether or not they can create a post. So in this case, if the authenticated user or guest is not authorized to create a post as defined by our create post action, Bouncer is going to throw an error, which will be a 403 forbidden error by default. If they are authorized, the call is going to continue as normal and render out our creator edit page. Now in the case of our view post check, so if we scroll down the show here, we need the post provided to the authorized call in order for it to actually work as defined by our action. So let's extract Bouncer out of here and let's run await bouncer.authorize and let's do view post as the action and we can provide this authorize check a second argument and now whatever we provide here as the second argument it can be an object it can be whatever we need is what's going to be provided as the second argument to our action definition callback function so for our view post we are expecting a post of type post so whenever we are calling view post we're going to want to provide a post instance itself so up here we have the query for a post record and so we want to provide that into our view post like so. So at this point in time, if we start our server up, which I already have my running and we head into it and we log in, we already have a user and that user is the default just user role. And so this user was called test user one and we provided a password. There we go. So now we're logged in. And now if we try to create a new post, we're going to get an error, which is a status of 403 that states you're not authorized to perform this action. So our bouncer check for creating a post is working a-okay. Now, if we try to view a post that is not yet published, we're also going to get an error, which states that this post is not yet published, which we've manually defined, and it's also going to throw a status of type 404. So that too is working just fine. So the way that Authorize handles this by throwing a default error is great for a lot of scenarios. However, there's some cases where you're just going to want something to be in a simple if statement, right? You just need to check whether or not a user can perform an action and do something about it. So for that, Bouncer has two different methods on it that we can use as a replacement for authorize. And those are called allows and denies. So in this case, if we don't want to throw our 404, this post is not yet public error, we can replace this authorize check with say a denies check, wrap this in an if statement. And so now we're checking if the user is denied access to view this post will be inside of this if statement. So when we're inside of this if statement, we can really do whatever we need to in order to properly deny this user access. So whether that's you know, grabbing the response off of our HTTP context contract and just returning it back to the previous page or doing something different is up to you. But in this case, let's return response back. Okay, give that a save, jump back in here. Let's head into here and let's try to go back to our post number two. And you'll see we're redirected back to our home page because, because for the technical request tree, that is back for us. So that is working A-OK. -okay. And the alternative to denies is allows, and that's stating the inverse. So it's saying if the user is allowed to view this post, then we'll perform whatever is in this if statement. So you have those as options available to you as well. I feel like authorize best summarizes what this particular check should be doing. So we'll use that one going forward. Now, in some cases, you may need to authorize for a specific user outside of the context of the authenticated user within our HTTP context. In those cases, you can get an instance of Bouncer for that particular user by calling Bouncer.forUser. So we can do const user Bouncer equals Bouncer dot, and there's a method called for user, and we just need to provide it whatever user we want this user Bouncer property to then check for any time that we call authorize, allows, denies, anything like that. So first, let's grab our user. So let's do user equals, and let's do await user dot, and let's just find or fail one with an ID of one. So all that we need to do is provide that user into the bouncer.for user call. And now this user bouncer property is scoped to this particular user that we provided to the for user call. Whereas this bouncer property is still scoped to our authenticated user that is pulling off of our HTTP context. So we can use user bouncer to perform particular checks for this particular user. So user bouncer, and we have authorize, we have allows, we have denies, and each one of those checks as we run them will be scoped to the user that we provide it to this for user call. Okay, so now we know how to check whether a user is authorized to perform our actions within our controllers, services, and anywhere else that we have access to our HTTP context. Next, let's go over how we can do this within the Edge template engine. So let's scroll down to one of our views here, and let's first start out with our main layout. So within here, we have this link right here 
that will link the user to the create post page. In order to add a check to see whether or not the current user is authorized to create this new post to even need to show this link to the user, Bouncer added two global tags available within Edge for us to use. One is called can and the other is called cannot, which is the inverse of can. So first we'll cover can. So we can do at can and this accepts pretty much the same thing as authorize. So the first is going to be the action name. So for this one, we would want to do create post. And then if we needed to, the second could be any argument that the action itself would need. So in the view post case, it would be our post, but in this particular case, it is nothing. So once we have our can, we just end it with a at end can, and there we go. So now if we jump back into our browser and we refresh, the new post button is gone because this current user is not authorized to perform that action. Whereas if we flip this to cannot, we'll see the inverse happen. It will check whether or not the user cannot perform this action. If it cannot, then it will render whatever is inside. So with cannot, we will see the inverse and the button will reappear. Now, whenever it comes to viewing posts, we're already excluding our non-published via the query within our controller. So we really don't have anything within the Edge template engine to check for that particular action. So all that we have at this point in time is our create post button. However, now that we have a solid understanding on bouncer actions and how, how to use them and how to check whether users are authorized to perform particular tasks within our application, we're ready to apply these actions throughout the entirety of this application. So in the next lesson, we're going to be creating actions for the remainder of the authorization checks that we need and apply them within our views and controllers within this application.